Now move on to discuss the integration of the autonomic nervous system. The sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions oppose each other but in a complementary fashion, and most of the major organs of the body receive projections from both the sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions. This is known as dual innervation. Each system is on or active when needed and at the same time will inhibit or shut down the opposing system. The autonomic nervous system contains unique plexuses. Within the abdominal pelvic cavities, both the parasympathetic and sympathetic fibers mix in these unique plexuses, and they are the cardiac, pulmonary, esophagus, celiac, inferior mesenteric, and the hypogastric plexuses. Let's continue our discussion of the autonomic plexuses beginning with the plexuses in the thoracic cavity. The cardiac plexus. The cardiac plexus is located near the arch of the aorta, and this plexus contains both sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers. The autonomic fibers that enter the thoracic cavity intersect at the cardiac plexus and the pulmonary plexus. The pulmonary plexus is located at the level of the heart, and it also contains both sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers. The esophageal plexus is located just above the diaphragm, at the esophageal hiatus, where it passes through to the abdominal cavity. This plexus contains descending branches of the vagus nerve and the splanchnic nerve. The parasympathetic preganglionic fibers of the vagus nerve follow the path of the esophagus into the abdominal cavity to arrive at the celiac plexus. The celiac plexus is also known as the solar plexus. The inferior mesenteric and the hypogastric plexus. The inferior mesenteric plexus is associated with the celiac plexus. This plexus is located adjacent to the inferior mesenteric artery at approximately the L3 vertebral level. From this plexus, the innervation for the viscera down to the initial segments of the large intestine, extends. The hypogastric plexus is located at the level of the wings of the ileum bones of the hip. Located within the hypogastric plexus is the parasympathetic outflow of the pelvic nerves. Along with the sympathetic postganglionic fibers, sacral splanchnic nerves, and the sympathetic chain. The anatomical location of the parasympathetic versus the sympathetic. The parasympathetic division arises in the craniosacral areas. Unlike the sympathetic division, the parasympathetic division has long preganglion neurons that synapse upon a short postganglion neuron. This postganglion neuron releases the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, which brings about the response associated with the parasympathetic division such as a decrease in heart rate. Preganglion neurons in the sympathetic division are short. In fact, they synapse with the postganglion neurons in a region very close to the spine known as a sympathetic chain. The autonomic nervous system provides for visceral reflexes. The visceral reflexes of the body allow for fast automatic responses, which can be modified by signals from the brain. A visceral reflex arc is made up of the sensory neuron that delivers the sensory information from the peripheral receptor to the central nervous system. The outflow of the visceral reflex arc is made up of a preganglionic and a ganglionic neuron. Visceral reflexes can be divided into two groups, short reflexes and long reflexes. Short reflexes do not involve the central nervous system. The interneurons are located in the autonomic ganglia, whereas long reflexes involve an interneuron located in the central nervous system, as well as multiple synapses. The anatomy of a visceral reflex. The visceral reflex is made up of the following. Number one is the receptor. The activation of the receptor, which is the end of a sensory dendrite, detects a change in temperature or senses pain. 
Number two is the afferent neuron. The action potential passes the impulse from the receptor along the afferent fiber to the central nervous system for a long reflex. Number three is the interneuron processing. For a long reflex, this takes place in the central nervous system. For a short reflex, the interneuron is located within the ganglion. Number four is the visceral ganglionic neuron. This transmits the motor impulse to the effector. And number five is the visceral effector. This is the response of the effector, such as a muscle. The following is an overview of the control of the autonomic nervous system. Centers in the brainstem control both the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nerve fibers. These processing centers are in communication with a control center in the hypothalamus. The control of the autonomic nervous system can be divided as follows. Number one, the sympathetic division is controlled from the posterior and lateral hypothalamus. And number two, the parasympathetic division. This is controlled from portions of the anterior and medial hypothalamus. The functions of the autonomic nervous system can be impacted by the cerebral cortex and the limbic system through emotions. The contributions of higher levels of autonomic control. The cerebral cortex communicates at a subconscious level with both the hypothalamus and the pons, and it can dramatically influence the autonomic nervous system. The limbic system inputs the emotional state into the autonomic nervous system. Anger or fear directly impacts the action of the sympathetic division. The hypothalamus is a control center for both the parasympathetic and the sympathetic divisions. And the medulla oblongata contains centers such as the cardiac and respiratory center. These act as processing centers for both parasympathetic and sympathetic complex visceral reflexes.